This original WSRE presentation is made possible by viewers like you. Thank you. Hello and welcome to Pensacola State Today. I'm your host, Rexel Gilbert. Coming up on today's program, we will go on location to PSE's Dental Hygiene Clinic, where students are putting a smile on their patients' faces. PSE President Dr. Ed Meadows is in the studio to talk with us about new programs that are designed to not only provide an education, but also to prepare students for life on the job. We'll also learn more about PSE's $10,000 baccalaureate degree and we'll explore possibilities for high school students to get a jump start on their college education with dual enrollment. There are some degree programs where hands-on experience is critical to student success. The dental hygiene program is one of those. Pensacola State College offers an excellent opportunity for students interested in pursuing a career in dental hygiene. And it's a program that is also putting smiles on the faces of many in the community. Come along with us as we travel to PSC's Warrington campus. We have a 34 chair dental hygiene clinic. It's one of the larger programs in the state and um, we've been accredited, fully accredited the entire time of our existence. The program began in the 60s over on the Pensacola campus and was moved here to the Warrington campus in 1977. The program has gone from stand-up dentistry over on the Pensacola campus with all the technology that you could find in a, in a private practice. Our clinic is currently um, totally digital. We have no paper charts. We use everything on the computer. What makes this program unique, I believe personally, is their standard. They have a very high standard and they're not willing to lower that standard to meet any of the students' levels, but they, have, they just maintain a, a very high standard of professionalism, patient care, education, and that's truly something I would like to be a part of. The Navy has a unique opportunity for sailors to apply for the dental hygiene program. So I completed the prerequisites and submitted my application and it was approved and I got sent to dental hygiene school. Well, you know, I did look at all the other options because I'm originally from Louisiana. So I looked at the schools there and Pensacola just stuck out to me because I, when I came to talk to um, the department head, you know, she had so many great things to say about it. The students, when they enter the program, um, they almost feel like they're a family because they're with each other for two full years. And it really is true. Um, everybody in here is my family. I see them every day, I love them. We do have a um, fairly small ratio, one to five, and versus in a classroom setting where it's about one to 30. That's an accreditation standard. And that way the students have not one-on-one, -on -one, but um, fairly close supervision and feel like they have a connection with the faculty members. They're very assuring. Uh, the staff, the students, we look out for each other. And if there are times where we, um, we lack confidence, you know, we always are there to pick each other up and say, you know, hey, you got this. Uh, you know, we, we've been trained in this and, you know, we just remind each other to go back to the basics. I feel like our instructors really do prepare us. Um, they've all graduated from this program, maybe except for one. So they understand what we're going through and they know the um, expectations that we need to give to our patients. So I, I really do feel like we will be prepared when we graduate. The dental hygiene program is an intense course of study. Uh, students must complete 18 hours in order to be eligible to enter the program. And once they enter the program, they've entered a profession. It's not just a coursework which is paper and pencil, but they actually treat patients during their course of treatment, during their course of study, and they have to intermingle that with their coursework where they take tests and um, do the normal things that come with, with most um, general education courses. In the high standards they have here, they want you to be the best dental hygienist ever when you graduate and they really do have, start, they don't lower those standards at all. Our role, our goal is to make the most successful dental hygienist we can. Um, with any future students who are thinking about joining our program, um, I would definitely um, make sure to study anatomy and physiology. Um, with that, um, it just builds in, on top of each other with all the other um, classes that you'll take. So definitely, you know, study for all your science classes and chemistry is also very important to take seriously. To stay focused. 
if this is truly something that you want to do, you'll stick with it. And um, the staff is absolutely amazing. They are truly invested in the development of our students. So I, I definitely would give this program a thumbs up. They're gonna make sure that you have all the tools that you need for success. They're very thorough. You know, I feel like w once we graduate, I'll definitely be prepared to work in a private office and I'll know what I'm doing. A majority of their coursework is hands-on once they get into their second year. And it's vital for them in order to become a, a dental hygiene professional, they have to pass a clinical exam. We were established as a clinical site for testing which was very beneficial for the students and we prepare them um, through their two years study to be successful with that exam. The um, fact that our clinic is up to date really sets the student apart so that when they go into any dental setting, whether it be a private practice setting or community setting, they're equipped to um, handle any type of technology because they've been able to work with it on the clinic floor. I feel with our technology, we are very fortunate and very blessed to have what we have. Um, I had um, a friend who came in from a di different dental hygiene program, and she was definitely blown away with the technology that we have. So we definitely are um, at an advantage. Everything's new, so anything that we're utilizing here is what we'll be utilizing if we were in private practice or pretty much once we graduate. So the, the standard here is pretty up to date. The patient comes in, we do a comprehensive medical history. So after we check their medical history we look in their mouth and determine if dentally they um, are qualified for our clinic and if they do which clinic we want to make sure we um, direct them to. Uh, as I said um, different students need different requirements so we place the patients with the students that need those certain requirements. Uh, the fees for the clinic are nominal um, in comparison to uh, private practice settings. We charge one flat fee um, and it can be from twenty to forty dollars depending on the severity of your condition. We also do charge um, for x-rays. The students work um, more slowly obviously and then at different intervals are checked by an instructor so that adds time. So the minimal amount of time is a four-hour block. We do radiographs, we explore, we get uh, probing measurements and I truly feel as though, you know, every patient that I see, you know, they leave with a piece of me. I'm truly invested in their, their overall health, so it's, it's, a, it's a feeling that I, I really feel as though I can't describe in words, but it's, it's a truly good feeling, knowing that you're helping someone's uh, health. I'm definitely a lot of responsibility, you know, um, we're with the patients most of the time in the, um, in the office, you know, you know, your hygienist, you're with like 45 minutes and the dentist is only in there for like 10 minutes. So we definitely, they definitely expect a lot out of us. This course of study is intensively hands-on and we um, need the, the community patients to help them be successful. The beginning students treat patients who are a little on more routine side and as the students progress in their coursework, um, they need patients that are more difficult. I feel like I'm giving my patients a positive um, outcome. Um, as a child, I had very bad dental anxiety, and it was actually a hygienist that graduated from this program who I saw as a uh, preteen, and she really helped me calm down, and I would like to help my patients to calm down in their dental anxiety too. Um, when I'm working with a patient, I want to make sure they know how to have a better overall oral hygiene and tell them you know what's going on and like how to improve it. You're a dental hygienist, you're teaching them what they should do, how they can improve. It's very rewarding to see students go from beginners to exit students. It's very rewarding to know that you've made a difference in someone's life. It is a rewarding job and I mean it is hard at times, I'm not going to lie, but it's at the end of the day, it's so rewarding once you clean their teeth and they're so happy that you could do it for them and they feel way better about themselves and you, it makes you feel better about yourself because you help them. I absolutely look forward to my days in the clinic. Um, it's just another opportunity for me to provide care that I know that some people wouldn't be able to get anywhere else and I'm providing it at a low cost. So just knowing that I'm making a difference in someone's life, that truly means a lot. So I do look forward to those days. For appointments and more information, you can call the PSC Dental Hygiene Clinic at 850-484-2236. Up next, Dr. Ed Meadows joins us with news of exciting opportunities for PSC students both now and in the future. We'll be right back.
Welcome back. Pensacola State College President Dr. Ed Meadows joins us in our studios now with exciting news on a number of fronts. Welcome, sir. Thank you. Glad Pleasure to, you to be here. here. Let's start with the CETA agreement. Tell us what that is and what the benefit is to the students and also there's got to be a benefit to the community it seems like as well here. Well, certainly we're very um, fortunate that the Chamber of Com Commerce under their uh, Community Economic Development Association has taken the initiative to form a uh, partnership with uh, the public schools in Santa Rosa and Escambia County as well as UWF and Pensacola State uh, to create a, uh, a, a, um, a pathway uh, for educating parents and students in high schools uh, about uh, the career pathways that are available in Northwest Florida and uh, there'll be uh, newsletters and brochures and also a website that describes the uh, different opportunities in careers that are available in Northwest Florida and what they pay and how many, uh, what the educational and training requirements are and who offers those programs to train students uh, for those professions. So the benefit here, it helps, well, let's, let's start with when a student is going to college, it can just be mind-boggling. The choices can be just outrageous for a young person's mind. This kind of helps them start thinking ahead of time of what they want to do down the line and narrowing their scope somewhat as they begin to, to pursue a degree program, right? Exactly, and with so many students taking dual enrollment classes and AP classes, uh, uh, some students when they graduate from high school already have an associate degree in general studies, but career pathways uh, is more focused toward um, the um, plethora of opportunities there are that must be thought of ahead of time in terms of, uh, in, in a way as to not waste a student's time or a parent's money uh, when, they, when they actually get started uh, into a college uh, curriculum track. Uh, this will help them get there faster uh, so that they can enter the workforce. And some of these degrees will be professional degrees that require a postgraduate study or undergraduate degrees like a bachelor's degree or an associate degree or sometimes just a certificate. Uh, for example, associate degrees in cybersecurity or netting jobs in the community at about $80,000 a year. Uh, but we all know that you can, typically the more advanced degree that you get in specific disciplines, the more money you learn, earn over your lifetime and we, we want to make that information available to not only the students, but also to the parents that uh, in most cases are paying for the education of those students. Make smarter choices, earlier choices to help you as you maneuver your way through the system. Okay, money, <laughs> money, let's talk about money, parents' money. Um, Governor Rick Scott's $10,000 baccalaureate degree initiative. Let's talk about that and what it means to students at PSC. We actually initiated uh, one of our baccalaureate degrees as a $10,000 degree uh, last year. Uh, which was our uh, BAS degree in supervision and management and uh, Governor Scott wants to re-emphasize and add additional baccalaureate degrees uh, to those that are that are currently offered by uh, the 28 colleges in the Florida College system. And so now um, to re-emphasize the need to make college more affordable to students, uh, there is actually a place on the new baccalaureate application form for colleges that are going to be applying for additional baccalaureate degrees in workforce areas to indicate if it's one of the uh, baccalaureate degrees that uh, a college is planning to offer it at a $10,000 price tag. And of course, uh, our tuition for the baccalaureate the last two years uh, is 75% uh, of the average cost of a university a baccalaureate degree, but our baccalaureate degrees are also different than those that are offered by the university. They're, they're all workforce degrees, for example, uh, nursing and um, the uh, concentrations of the baccalaureate degree in uh, graphic design and uh, healthcare management. <coughs> Those are all designed for people that are in the workforce uh, that want to come back and um, have a, uh, a degree that will allow them a career ladder in their chosen profession and they must have an associate degree to matriculate into our baccalaureate degrees. All right, great. Um, nursing, you mentioned that, leads me to thinking of science and <laughs> mathematics, which leads me to think about science, technology, engineering, and mathematics, STEM. Some exciting news about um, 
what's going to be some changes, some actual physical changes on the campus we can look forward to? Well, we got a $1 million planning um, allocation from the legislature last year to replace uh, our Boris Building, Building 1, which is um, getting close to being 59 years old. Uh, so this STEM facility uh, is in the planning stages. Um, it will include uh, the, air, uh, the aerospace uh, industries programs like the avionics and the project management and x-ray technology and things like that for aviation composites uh, that's putting together different plastics and um, for uh, component parts uh, within the, uh, the airframe structure. So, uh, but, but in addition to uh, those programs, our mathematics department will be uh, located there as well as the Art Gateway program, which was started this year. Um, so that's a very specialized program for uh, intellectually challenged individuals. But the, the STEM facility within itself will, will house our uh, cybersecurity programs, our applied engineering degree programs, uh, as well as the uh, aviation uh, industries training programs. So we're really excited to, to get started in, in planning this three-story building to replace building one. And those are all programs that are just exploding in interest with students because the jobs are there. That's right. Uh, you know, the Northwest Florida, uh, through great leadership in economic development, is really focused on advanced manufacturing and uh, the aerospace industry, and these are very high-paying jobs. Also, the, the virtual companies, uh, through our partnership with the Chamber and our Entrepreneurial Center, uh, they're beginning to really take hold in Northwest Florida and are adding uh, people that have very high paying jobs. And these are high tech jobs that require technology savvy uh, employees. Good. Okay, we're about out of time, but I want to talk about a community survey that's coming up. Right. Uh, our South Santa Rosa Center, which opened in uh, 2010, is serving our general education uh, population, and those students are then having to come to uh, another campus to, uh, to finish up their degree in a technology area. So what we want to do is, is look at uh, conducting a survey um, for technology programs that would, that would be needed in South Santa Rosa County. Mm -hmm. And uh, after we complete that survey, um, we, uh, we have a plan to build a technology building at the South Santa Rosa campus. And uh, the, the way in which uh, this would work is that we're gonna ask uh, our community partners and people that are in business in South Santa Rosa County to participate in that survey to indicate the kind of workforce that they need and the, their expansion plans and their business and industry. Okay, well so much going on as always. This, uh, this campus is just alive with activity and growth and it's always exciting for you to come in and chat with us and we look forward to seeing you again next month. I'll look forward to being here. All right, thank, thank you. you Dr. Meadows. Bye. And still ahead, getting a jump start on college via the dual enrollment program. We'll be right back. Welcome back. Joining us in the studio now are Dr. Brenda Kelly, who is the Dean of General Studies, and also Kathy Dutrimble, who is the Dean of Enrollment Services. And you are here today to talk to us about the Associate of Arts and Arts degree and PSE's dual enrollment program. And thank you very much for being with us today. Good thank to you. be here. Okay, let's just jump right into it first. And Dr. Kelly, why don't you describe for me, for our viewers, the Associate in Arts degree and its purpose? Yeah, the Associate in Arts degree um, is designed for students who want to earn a bachelor's degree. So in essence, what it is is the first two years of a four-year program. And it's often referred to as our university transfer degree. Mm -hmm. And it's made up of 60 credit hours, and 36 of those hours are general education hours. So students take a, a broad range of courses um, in communications, math, natural sciences, social sciences, and humanities um, for those 36 hours. And then the 24 remaining hours are made up of courses that um, 
are of interest to students in the bachelor's degree that they want to pursue. Um, at, at Pensacola State, what we've done is we have pre-planned programs. So a lot of times students will come to us and say, um, you know, I, I, I want to major in biology. So we've set up that 60 credit hours and, and really in an effort to prepare them for success in, the, um, in a bachelor's degree. Okay. Now, what are the advantages to earning this degree at Pensacola State College? Uh, I think the, the biggest, the most obvious advantage um, um, initially for folks is the cost savings. Um, it, for students who earn the Associate in Arts degree here at Pensacola State, the cost is, is roughly half of what it would be had the student just entered um, their first semester at a university. Mm -hmm. I think that's the most obvious. People see that right away. Um, um, equally important, though, I think, is the, the quality instruction that we offer here. Um, in, in, in all of our courses, um, our instructors are not only high qual highly qualified, but their number one priority is teaching students. So here we don't have um, uh, graduate assistants teaching our classes. Um, our our um, full-time professors are the main instructors of the course. What is a guaranteed transfer? That's a question that, and the answer to that's gonna be important to students. Mm -hmm. In the state of Florida, we have a statewide articulation. And, and what that means is that um, students can move seamlessly from public institution to public institution, and, and um, those credits will transfer. Um, now, what's, what's really important about the Associate in Arts degree is that if a student completes that degree with us, um, um, he or she is guaranteed admissions to um, an upper division institute here in the state of Florida. So, so that's really pretty key. Um, a student can earn that Associate Art of Arts degree here and it, they will be guaranteed admission to a public institution in Florida. All right, Kathy, let's talk to you now about dual enrollment. Okay. Tell us what dual enrollment consists of and what are the benefits to the student? Why do this? Dual enrollment is an acceleration program that was created for secondary school students um, that want to get their high school credit and college credit at the same time. So um, again, I think the, the most um, obvious benefit is the fact that it's free to these students and to parents. I think that's the number one thing that they um, love about it. It doesn't cost anything for them. Studies so the student is in high school, mm -hmm. they sign on to the dual enrollment program, mm -hmm. they take their college courses, and it doesn't cost doesn't a cost dime. Them. The, the classes are free and the textbooks are free. So they're earning their high school credit toward graduation from high school and they're earning college credit at the same time. Studies have also shown that these students tend to perform better academically and the likelihood that they'll graduate with a college degree is increased because they're doing this program. What's the so, reason behind that? You think the psychology of that? Do you think it just gets them um, excited early on about the the college I experience? Think a, I think there's a. I think that's yes, one of the um, answers to that. And I think that student is typically more motivated. I think it helps them set goals earlier. Um, determining what they want to do, the direction they want to go, the major they want to pursue. And when students know what their final outcome is or the goal, I think they pursue that with more passion or they set those goals and go toward them. So. What is early admissions dual enrollment? That's the program for students that are actually taking all of their classes on the college campus. Usually once a student is a junior, um, and, and they are at the point where they decide they want to leave the high school campus and enroll as a full-time dual enrollment student on our college campus. They take a minimum of 12 college credits, um, can take up to 15 credits, but then they're with us full-time and, and they're almost like a college student. They're in college classes. They get to experience um, some of the different student activities that they would experience as a college student. Mm -hmm. They participate in some of the same clubs. So it's really a great opportunity for them to prepare them and create that foundation that Brenda was talking about that gets them ready once they finished with us their AA to transfer on to university. They're um, academically ready and I think 
maturity, they're also ready. They've, they've experienced what college life is like. So once they transfer on, their foundation is much stronger for them. So for the parent or the student who's watching this and thinking, hmm, that could be for me or that could be for my child, what are the eligibility requirements? And I'll, I'll let you guys decide who wants to answer this one. There's some, there's some general things, and then I would encourage um, parents and students to talk to the high school counselors about the more specific requirements, but in general, a 3.0 um, unweighted high school GPA for those students that want to pursue the AA or our AS degree courses, and then for those that may be more interested in our um, career education track, that would be a 2.5 um, unweighted GPA. Then there's also a placement test, whether they decide to take the ACT, the SAT, or our PERT, our placement test, which is free for them. Um, we'll look at those test scores to see if they're academically ready um, to take college level classes. Then our local articulation agreements, which we have with the Scambia County School District and Santa Rosa County School District, also has some additional um, eligibility requirements. And the high school counselor will work with the student to make sure that they have all those requirements met to help them um, know what classes that they should take and then whether they should take those classes on the college campus or they could be taking some dual enrollment classes on the high school campus. Now, we're just about out of time, but I wanted to get a, a, at least one more question and maybe two. How does this differ from advanced placement? Um, good question. Advanced placement are courses that students take at the high school. They are rigorous courses. Advanced placement courses, um, they take them during the year. However, they wait until um, May to take that post exam to determine if they're going to pass and receive college credit. There's a cost to take the advanced placement exam. Um, a student may receive a subsidy if they qualify so that they don't have to pay to take that exam. If they pass the exam, then they might receive college credit. The great thing about dual enrollment is that you have more classes to choose from. Um, you're not paying to take the classes or to have to take that exam. And as you finish and complete your dual enrollment courses and take your final exam, you're getting your grade and you're able to move on. So. Well, Kathy Dutrimble and Dr. Brenda Kelly, thank you so much for being with us today to talk about the Associate in Arts degree and also dual enrollment. Thanks for and, having uh, us. Yes, we'd love to have sure. you back to talk at length another time. Thank you. All thank right, you. thank you. But that's going to wrap it up for this edition of Pensacola State Today. I'm your host, Rexel Gilbert. We'll see you next time.